So again, thank you all very much. My name is uh, Cecilia Moreno. I'm the Director of Community Relations for the Port of Los Angeles. And what we will be discussing uh, this evening is the Port of Los Angeles Community Investment Grants for the fiscal year 2024-2025. Um, I would just briefly would like to provide you a, a, a quick overview of the community investment grant program. So our program has been in existence now since fiscal year 2014. This uh, we've, we've had a, a different variety of how we've done our sponsorship program throughout the years, but it really was thanks to the, the, the lead, the direction of our uh, former commissioner, Dave Arian who asked us to put more structure into the program. And so after evaluating and looking at how other ports did it and other entities, we ended up with this um, community investment grant program. And uh, uh, successfully, we, we've been able to so far um, over the course of uh, now, we're, we're celebrating our 10th year, uh, we received um, 545 applications for a total ask of $25.5 million over the course of those years. And I'm happy to report that we've um, awarded uh, close to 300 grants for a total funding of um, 9.3, just over $9.3 million. Um, just in this last fiscal year, so fiscal year 23-24, um, we saw a pretty uh, significant uptick in the number of applications. We received um, 65 applications um, when historically we've gotten between 35 and 45. We, we did receive 65 last year for a total ask of $3.35 million. And of that, we were able to move forward 36 um, grant applications for a total of $1.5 million. Um, this year process is, is very similar to years in past. Actually, it's the same as in years past. The application was made available in March, as is the case. Right at the beginning of March, the application is available on the port's website, and we do our best to um, uh, communicate it on social media. Our community affairs advocates and myself, as well as the community relations team and our media team does the best that we can to um, make the public and the organizations and nonprofits available of this grant program. Um, the applications are due back to us by May the 6th, uh, by 4 p.m. And, and we are very strict about that cutoff date. Um, uh, immediately thereafter, what will end up happening is that then we have a selection team um, that gets together uh, to review the grant applications. And then ideally the plan is to uh, make notifications and to go before the Board of Harbor Commissioners announcing the grant uh, recipients in the, in the month of July. Um, a little bit so you understand how the uh, process and selection team um, works. So we have a, a committee of six that includes representation from the Port of Los Angeles, representation from the local chambers of commerce, uh, um, representation from both the Wilmington and the San Pedro community, as well as a uh, representation from the office of um, Councilman uh, Tim McCosker. And so this embodies the members, there are six members on the review committee that uh, take the time to review each and every one of the applications. Um, and then once the, the determination is made of which applications are gonna move forward, we then have um, the city attorney review the applications. Um, that usually takes uh, several weeks. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it just depends on how involved they are. And then once we've gotten past that to make certain that everything is in order and that we meet the Tidelands Trust and everything is in order, then like I was mentioning then in July, we then are able to make a presentation to the Board of Harbor Commissioners where um, the grants will be announced uh, and that will be in July. 
So we do have available, uh, once again, for this fiscal year, the $1.5 million in funding. However, I do want to uh, be very transparent and, and, and let the public know, the organizations know, that um, as is the case in our, our third bullet point there, we do have two categories of grants. We have the general grants, which are grants that are um, that are under $100,000. And then we have the larger grants, which are grants that are awarded of over $100,000. And, and something that is different between these two grants grants outside of the funding is also the fact that the large grants have the um, uh, ability and, and for the most case has been the case that they are also grants that renew every two years. So in this last cycle that we awarded the, the grant cycle, we did have um, two um, grants that were awarded at the large, uh, at the large grant. And so those those recipients will then have, as long as everything is in place, they they meet the um, their their scope of work and they complete their their wrap up report. These um, large recipients will then be renewed their grant for a second year. So that would be to be specific and to be clear, it is both the Los Angeles Maritime Institute as, as well as EXP. Um, are the two recipients that will, um, as long as, again, everything is in place, they, they continue to meet their scope of work and they submit their wrap-up reports, they will um, be, be renewed a grant for in this fiscal year, fiscal year 24-25. And then um, also uh, to be clear, what you are applying for, the program events that you are applying for right now must take place between July 1 of 2024 and be completed by July 30 of 2025. So getting into- July 30 or June 30? June 30. I'm sorry, did I say June 30? Yeah, I said July, but it's written up June 30. Thank you for catching that, June 30. So you have one fiscal year to to get that um, completed. The um, the process then again is is we we um, try and make the application and we're going to be looking at it in a minute. We try and make it as as simple and transparent as possible. So um, you will um, you are and you are able to get a a copy of the application in Word format from the Port of Los Angeles .org website. So you have the application. And, and very clearly in there, the, the requirements that, uh, that will allow you to be considered for review include making sure that one, you get your application into us submitted by the May 6, 4 p.m. deadline. You need to make sure you sign it because incredibly that has happened. So you, you make certain that the, you sign your application. You are required to submit a copy of your IRS 501c3 letter that demonstrate that you are a legitimate 501c3 entity. And we need a copy of that letter with your application. And then you also um, uh, must include a budget. And to be clear, the budget that you are submitting is for the program that you are applying for. So it isn't necessarily for for your operating budget, for your organization. It just depends on what you're applying for, of course, but the budget that you want to include is for the program, the project that you are applying for. And so again, uh, once those applications are in, and we do not, once you've submitted it up until the day of May 6, we don't uh, review them, we don't look at them, they're placed in a sealed box and they're left like that. Literally, literally until uh, May 7th, when then I open the box and then I start looking for these three items, that the application is completed and signed, that a letter of the 501c3 is attached, and that you included a budget. And then at that point, then we schedule, or actually we already have scheduled, but then we, we have the review committee come together to review and to make their recommendations before the next step, which is then to have the city attorney review the recommended uh, grants. So this is probably one of the, the most important 
um, parts that I can stress is, is regarding what the program goals are of our community investment grant program. These are the, the um, probably the, some of the terminology that you want to uh, um, include in your grant application. And so what they include, what are the goals of our, our, of our community investment grant? So it is about promoting the LA waterfront in San Pedro and Wilmington as active visitor friendly destinations that benefit the state of California. That is our number one, our first goal there. To promote the Port of Los Angeles and the maritime commerce and port related jobs that are generated by our operations. To address impacts of the Port of Los Angeles and maritime operations on surrounding communities, including health, aesthetic, and environmental impacts. To promote and implement sustainable practices for, for preservation and conservation of natural resources in the port environment, including renewable energy, water, air, wildlife, bio, biological resources at the Port of Los Angeles. And to provide education, training, and or workforce development in the areas of shipping, fishery, international trade and maritime industry, maritime related sciences and technology, port and maritime history, and port and maritime related safety and emergency management. So again, the, these are the kinds of terminologies that you wanna make sure that you, when you're looking at the program that you're, you're considering applying for or the event that you're considering uh, submitting an application for, you want to make sure that it aligns with, with as many of these program goals as possible and that it, it includes some uh, that it includes these goals because uh, because that is something absolutely that the um, review committee looks at as well as the city attorney when they're making certain that these that the grant applications that are moving forward um, qualify. But probably even more important than the program goals is this next slide, and it has to do with the Tidelands Nexus. So all of the community, and I'm gonna move this so I can make sure I, I capture the wording. So all community grants are made from the Harbor Department's Harbor Revenue Fund. As such, grant proposals must be Tidelands Public Trust compliant and clearly show a nexus and benefit between the proposed project program or event and the Harbor Department's Tidelands Public Trust in the nexus statement. And so there's a section in your application that is dedicated just to this. If an application has elements that are not consistent with the Tidelands Trust, those elements will not be eligible for funding. So the activities are compliant with the Trust doctrine include navigation of the waters, maritime commerce, fishing, marine environment, ecological preservation, marine related scientific study, water related recreation, and visitor serving waterfront activities. Now, something that I, I wanna stress, and I would say we, we noticed it more um, in this last round, and so I, I thought it would be important to highlight to you as you're, as you're preparing to, to get your applications written up and submitted, is that um, it, it has gotten more competitive as the years have gone on and as the word goes out that, that this program is available to our 501c3s. So it's important to, if possible, and as much as possible, if, if you can demonstrate more than just one of these bullet points, I highly recommend that you do. Um, uh, just having it on poor property, just being visitor serving, um, has made it more challenging for the review committee because when they're weighing what has a strong nexus, what will receive funding, um, has been has has definitely been a discussion for the for the the review committee. So I would like to just stress to everybody that as you're that as you're preparing and as you're you're writing your grant that you try and keep that in mind. 
And, and as difficult as it is for us to um, sometimes explain, just being a good program, a project or event in the community, because there are so many out there that are, it, if it does not have that Tideland's nexus, um, it, we just cannot fund it. And so I, I would like to just stress that as much as possible. Um, and so, so I wanted to also uh, um, give a, a, a few words on the the selection committee reserves the right to the following, and the, and this is something that does we we usually get asked these questions. So um, we have the they refuse the right to award up to the requested amount, and and speaking very uh, frankly, it, it it is rare for the committee to award a grant. Um, to a grant, uh, award the full amount that is requested. It is, it is quite common for the committee to re, to award um, certain um, uh, to certain amount. And in part, what the hope is that um, that as you are writing your your grant or looking at your proposals, that this is an opportunity for the port to be a partner not only with you but with other supporting supporters and sponsors of your program so ideally that you aren't relying just on the port to make this program happen and so in part i i, I do want to just uh, be very upfront about that that um it is typical that the full amount is not awarded and they look at who are the other partners who else believes in this program in this entity what else are they doing who else is is being joined to be a partner of this and so that is that is something that is important and i just wanted to highlight um, and this has happened that we the applications have been disqualified for not submitting their 501c3 letter okay and so documentation so that is very important um, that you make certain that you include that when you submit your applications we are requesting for electronic submissions only however if if um, you're running into a bind and you are having an issue emailing it. Um, don't wait till the last minute. We intentionally give you that last weekend um, instead of having them come in on a Friday. You know, we're giving you that last weekend and then you can get it in on Monday. If you need to walk it into us, we will accept that. Ideally, though, we'd really um, uh, would like to receive it electronically. That way it's stamped basically with the email that comes in. If you do walk it in, um, our staff will stamp it and put a signature to it, but we'd rather like, we'd rather have everything come in electronically. Um, we have disqualified late submissions. Again, the cutoff is uh, May the 6th at 4 p.m. And, and we do honor that. And so, uh, as much as possible, do not wait till the last minute to get yours in. And then disqualify any new applications of past grantee who did not meet the agreement stipulations or did not submit a wrap up report. And that is that is very important to us that at the end of the program, at the end of the year, when your your program is completed, that you submit to us a a uh, wrap-up report and we walk you through that as as the application process moves forward um so again see uh just reviewing what 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 will be expected of you should your should your application uh, be awarded a grant uh we want to make you aware of these items so the requesting uh organization must be a 501c3 we've discussed that and then we'll also um, we'll also be required to submit uh, a W nine. You don't need to do that when you're getting your application in. That is actually in the next step once you are you are um, recognized as being one of the ones receiving an award. We will request from you a W nine. We will also, and this is something that that takes a little bit of time and it goes through the process. Is we will uh, evaluate what uh, your program is. And then our risk management will then advise us of what insurance requirement will be needed of you. And then we will communicate that to you. So again, you don't need to provide any proof of that right now. We're going to walk you through the steps of when the time comes, but insurance will absolutely be a requirement. The next one is also one that sometimes some of the organizations don't have at this time. There will be time for you to secure it. And that is the City of Los Angeles Business Tax registration certificate. 
501c3s are exempt from taxes. What you will get though, is you will still apply for a BTRC. And everybody refers to it as a BTRC. What you will get if everything is in order is the city of LA will then deem you exempt, but they send you a certificate that assigns you a number and that is what we will require of you. You don't need to do that yet. That is only if your grant moves forward and we will assist you with getting that completed um, through the Office of Finance. Again, the, the program must show a clear nexus that, um, uh, and as well as um, um, include the uh, ports goals of uh, the stated goals of the community investment grant program. And then the grants are for a single year, unless you're, you receive a large grant. And in that case, the additional year is optional as long as the, the scope of work is met and the, um, the wrap-up report is submitted in a timely fashion. Um, uh, I would also like to communicate that the um, recipients for this grant cannot be individuals. And it has to be a legitimate 501c3 in good standing. Cannot be political campaigns. Uh, we are not allowed to fund groups that discriminate, uh, religious organizations, groups with which the Port of Los Angeles is currently in litigation or which has sued the Port of Los Angeles that will disqualify you. And then unions representing City of Los Angeles employees are also not permitted to um, apply for community investment grants. Grant. Uh, and we are we are keeping even though the the situation with COVID has has kind of um, uh, calmed down. It isn't as as where we were a few years back. We still do include um, and ask that proposals must state how the event program or project will accomplish will be accomplished in a safe and responsible manner. We're, with regards to any and all public health concerns, COVID or otherwise. And this is something that I think uh, most entities already keep in mind and, and already have in mind as you're planning your program or your event. But we, I did just want to highlight that uh, for you, that it's still a requirement of our, of our program. So again, um, uh, the applications are due back to us by Monday, May the 6th, 4 p.m. is the latest. The notifications will be made in July of this year. We anticipate a, a presentation to the Port of Harbor Commissioners. And at that time, we will re reach out to the organizations that are being awarded funding and invite them to join us at the Board of Harbor Commissioners meeting. Um, uh, we will send an agreement for signatures and then, and then again, like I was mentioning earlier, explain to you the insurance requirements and uh, what will be required of your organization. And there'll be there'll be time to to have you go back and, and with your brokers and get that all squared away. Uh, the invoices may be sent after the agreement is complete, so you will get what we call an executed agreement emailed to you. And then at that time, we will then request the invoices uh, that are to be submitted for us so that we can begin to process the payment. And then um, we do require uh, a what we call the wrap up report, and that is at the end of the before the July, the June thirtieth. 2025 uh, uh, fiscal year ends, we require a wrap-up report and we will give to you the template of what we need from you. We will also request from the organizations that are receiving funding that they submit to us an electronic logo and then a photo of their event, the program or what it is that they are they are pulling together. And, and that is to be used by our media um, uh, uh, group and to to discuss where the funding is gone and to put on our, our, our website and for promotional purposes. That is um, one of the requirements. Okay. So um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pause really quick because we do have some um, questions. Let me pull this up. Can a single organization apply for multiple? Yes. So yeah, if, if an organization has more than one program or has different, um, different uh, events that they would like, yes, you, you can apply for multiple grants. You are allowed to do that. 
If the insurance is the require, if the insurance is the requirement, can we use the grant when we? I'm sorry, when we pay for? Can we use the grant when we pay for the insurance? Unfortunately, the um, the invoice will uh, will not actually. Let me uh, step back for a minute. So when we uh, set submit to you your um, executed um, agreement. Um, we then will ask for your invoice and, and then we begin the process to submit your, your payment to you. So, um, and as long as everything is in order and we don't run into any issues with cutting your check to you, and that usually will take a few weeks and then, um, and, uh, you, you will still actually, no, you will still have to, you will still need to have your, your insurance in place in order for our risk um, uh, risk management to allow this process to go forward. So you would you would need to have that in place. But we will we will work with you to help you with getting all of that in place. But you you will need to have that um, in place. Is there a sample budget? No, we completely leave that leave that up to the entities to submit it. What I would like to to say to that is when you are preparing your um, I think that's the last question for now, and then we'll continue with the, with the, with the PowerPoint. But then we can step back, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, as you as you consider um, your as you're preparing your grant and your budget that will be uh, that will describe what the funding will will go to. I did want to mention a couple of things in that in your budget, so it will be specific to the program to the event that you're submitting for. I would uh, uh, suggest that you keep in mind that historically we have had the review committee as well as the uh, city attorney when we review the, the grant applications that in your budget, um, if at all possible, we have not um, had many grants that uh, will, will reimburse you for, for salaries and for uh, payments directly. Um, with the exception, I would say, of, uh, of grants that were awarded to entities that were requesting funding for um, for interns, I, I probably the exception. For the most part, the grants should be for more tangible or for um, um, items like uh, you're paying for buses. You're you you you're gonna bring. Children to come and can to come and visit the uh, to do a beach cleanup or or um, visit the maritime museum or uh, things like that. The cost of the buses, the cost of the printing the flyers, the cost of the banners, the the, uh, the promotional material. Those tangible items are are things that you you um, you know should consider including in your budget. But when it comes to uh, paying for salaries or people, I would say for the most part, it has been more challenging. And in part, um, because it also has gotten more competitive, um, it, it um, if you can list more of those tangible items on your grant and your budget, you probably have a better chance than saying we need $30,000 to pay for staff. Um, that is just that's just how the in general how the committee has been has been um, evaluating the grants as they review them. Um, and I'll go I'll open up the 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 questions I'll go back to the chat and check those. So I'm just going to go with these next few slides and then and then we'll open it up again for for any questions. So again, in front of you, uh, what I have now is the is the grant application that again it's available on Word, so you can you can download it and 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 fill it out. It, we uh, tried as much as possible to keep it uh, as simple and as easy to follow, but you're always welcome to to um, email and I will provide you my email at the end should you have questions or if you have any any concerns or anything else needs clarification but for the most part um, we you know we we need uh, the organization's name um, again the a copy of your 501c3 letter if you don't have the BTRC at this time don't worry about it it isn't required when you submit your application you you will have time to get that completed and then at that point, we just need um, details about what the program, the project it is that you are seeking funding for, 
if you already have the dates, if as much detail as possible, what locations you're planning to have this, as, as thorough as you can be, that would be, um, that would be ideal. And then um, again, then you wanna get into the description of what it is you're planning to do. Um, if you keep it to the word, if, if it's not enough or you need to do an attachment or you wanna include something separate, you're welcome to do that. Your application can include other, other pages. Um, that is not a problem. Uh, we tried to make it simple and, and easy for you to fill in, but if, if you don't wanna work within these boxes and would rather um, uh, use a different format, that's fine as long as you, you provide um, in this order, this information. So again, um, how many people do you intend to serve with this program or event? Um, will this be an event that is free and open to the public? Is there a cost for your program? Again, as much detail as you can. The, uh, the added uh, documentation, as we've talked about, is that budget. The contact name, critical, very important. If you need to put more than one person in this section because um, you know, you're working as a team or somebody um, uh, um, isn't as readily available, please do so because communication between us, whether it's um, email or phone number, is, is very critical. Sometimes there, there's clarifying questions that I need to follow up with the entities about that a city attorney may have. And so having the, the a contact name there, a person that we can reach um, uh, rather quickly is very helpful. Um, ideally, a phone number that we can get a hold of. And of course, an email because uh, uh, the interaction does happen. Um, um, we do have a lot of exchange with you uh, via email. So very important. And if you want to have more than one contact person, that is perfectly fine. You are welcome to do that. And then, of course, the the um, if you have or are currently receiving Port of Los Angeles funding, um, please uh, let us know what that is. And then and then you will include there what what it is, the amount that you are requesting for funding. So on this next uh, page is when you can really uh, dig into your program and, and, and give the committee as much information about your program history, what it is as, uh, uh, um, that you are requesting the, the funding for. At this point, that in that next box, you are going to talk about your, your project, your program goals, and that's where you want to, as much as possible, align your program goals with the goals of the community investment program itself. And so we, we talked about that. Um, uh, actually, first you're gonna do your program goals. And then in that third box, you're gonna talk about how they align and support the Port of Los Angeles Investment Grant Program goals. So you, as much as possible, you really wanna use that termin terminology and align your program as much as possible with the program goals of the, um, the grant program. And then, um, and we put it in bold there because that's how critical that, that nexus is. You wanna spend some time really tying what your program is and aligning it and, and as much as possible clarifying that and supporting your, your, uh, your nexus statement, which ones align with your program. Um, and then, well, and then uh, the next one, and I'm not sure why it's highlighted. I'm sorry about that. That should, there's no reason for that to be highlighted. The next statement one is, is the one that, that would be more highlighted, but we're talking about the, um, uh, co uh, so if you can explain how your program uh, will will take into consideration health con uh, considerations and how you'll accommodate any health protocols in your program. Um, also something very important, and, and this was really one of the reasons why the, the community investment grant programs uh, became, came to be, was the partnership. This is the, the Port of Los Angeles is looking to be a partner with, with your entities, with the community programs and, and uh, nonprofits in the community. And so how will your program recognize the port? How will there, this be a true partnership with you. So spending some time really thoroughly explaining that to the review committee really um, is very helpful. And so if I can just um, uh, ask you to spend a little time on that one, that would be that would be very helpful. 
And also very impo important is for you to be able to explain what the metrics and methodolo methodology um, that you're gonna be using to evaluate the success of your program. You know, the number of attendees, uh, the what your program is offering, the, the impact that it's making. So if you could spend some time explaining that to us, that would be um, very helpful to the review committee. And then, uh, and then the last item there is again, very important. Make sure to sign your application, date it, and get it into us by 4 p.m. on May the 6th. You'll submit your application um, to the Port of Los Angeles uh, sponsorships at portla.org. If you could help us by putting in the subject line, fiscal year 24-25 community investment grant, uh, grants that would be that would be very helpful to us. Um, and then I've attached for you here. Uh, and this is the a sample of the agreement that uh, that is included with the grant application. When you when you um, download it, you'll see it. Um, we will. Um, th this is a sample of what I was telling you. The executed agreement. So this is a sample of one um, that you will sign once we are we we. Uh, had it reviewed by our risk management. Once the city attorney has signed off on it, we then will request your signatures. It will come back to us. It will then be assigned an agreement number. And at that point, it becomes an executed agreement. We will then submit it to you um, with your uh, agreement number. And then at that point is then when we will ask for you to submit to us the invoice and then the ball starts rolling to get your grant paid out to you. Um, that is the next. The next. So with that, um, I'm now going to uh, uh, go to the chat. So let's let's go to the chat and then we will open it up for questions. So let me, um, let's see. Uh, does the grant cover insurance or administrative costs? So the grant can cover your insurance costs for the program or event that you are applying for. It will not cover insurance for your organization or for your entity. Just asking for us to cover your insurance, no. But if you are you are putting on an event, a program, and you and there are and and our risk determines that you have to have a certain type of insurance, then yes, that can be one of the line items on your budget when you submit it. Administrative costs, you can include them in your insurance in your um, in your budget that you submit. Uh, in general, the committee has has not given that as much consideration. Um, but you can include it. You you can. There's nothing that says that they cannot. But in general, as the committee has reviewed, administrative costs has not gotten high scores to be, be be covered by the committee to receive funding. If that is the bulk of your grant application, um, you, you're it, it, again. It, it's becoming more and more competitive. So so please do keep that in mind. Uh, we submitted VTRC and may not be able to receive the number before that you, again, you do not need to have it by the May 6th deadline. Um, let me be very clear. You do not need to have a VTRC when you submit your grant application. There will be time to, if you are awarded a grant, we will then let you know so that you begin that process to secure your VTRC. So you do not need to have that um, you mentioned it does not need to be by the deadline. That is correct. Yes, you don't need to have it by the deadline. And as long as you have your 501c3 letter, we've had um, we we have had nonprofits go into the office of finance with their paperwork in hand and walk out with their certificates all squared away. You can do it online, uh, but yeah, you won't have a problem. Uh, let's see. Can I resubmit an application for corrections? So, uh, Dell Atkins, can you email me? Here's my email address. I'm gonna move this. Can you email me and remind me of that? And then, and because, like I said, we literally are getting the applications and we're putting them inside this box. But if now that the workshop has happened and you realize something differently, yes, yeah, we can we can uh, uh, email me exactly how you packaged it, and then we will. We will take that one out and 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 uh, um, or you can just resubmit one and 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 
and say that this will replace the other one. Maybe that's the easiest thing to do is, is resubmit it to us and just request that your this application with this date replace the one that you had already submitted. Um, let's see, let's see. Does the port have insurance carriers for us to use? No, we we cannot. Uh, we do not do that, and we cannot recommend an insurance carrier. You that is something that your entity would need to secure, um, independent of. We just will need to let you know what will what insurance requirements will be needed. But uh, but that would be for you to work with your broker or your uh, somebody to secure. But we we cannot make those kind of recommendations. Does uh, So does that mean we already have to have insurance before we apply? So we're going to let you know what that insurance requires. So at this point, we don't know what it's going to be because your application needs to be submitted. And then we're going to let you know. And that's if you're, we will have that discussion with you because your grant was awarded funding. So there's still time. At this point, submit what you would like to request funding for. And if you are um, if you are, are granted, if you are, are uh, awarded to move forward, then we're going to have that discussion with you and we'll work with you to get that all squared away. You Because at this point, you wouldn't even know what will be required of you, okay? Um, has the committee awarded vocational programs in the... Um, let me remember, and we've... Um, in our 10 year history, I, I want to say we have, but I'm going a little blank on, um, uh, I, I want to give an example right now. I want to say we have, uh, but I, I can't. So Jane, will you email me and let me let me dig back in our history, but I'm, I'm going a little blank, but I want to say yes, but I don't want to be misleading. But if you will email me, how do I move this? Sorry, I want to move the box, but it's cmoreno at portla.org. Um, let's see. Excellent. Uh, you want to double confirm. We should use a separate application. Correct. If you have more than one, yes, that is correct. If you have more than one um, um, uh, event or program that you would like for consideration, yes, you may and others have. You can apply uh, different applications. Yes. Is there a maximum number of pages or it, there is not. There is not a maximum, but Jane, keep in mind that I have the same six people reviewing all of the grants. So we want them to like you. <laughs> so don't give us a book. Um, but no, there there isn't there isn't a, there isn't a limit. So if you need, you know, if you need more than one page to provide the detail of what your program is and to describe it and to demonstrate the nexus, you take the time you need to make that happen. That's very important. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing so that I could see everybody, and then and then uh, our 501. Our, I see another question there. Um, and again, the the PowerPoint will be available on the port website website. The the presentation that we just went over. Our 501c is old, and we have to order the IRS form. What if we don't get in time? If you do not have that 501c3 letter. You, your application will not move forward. That that is that is how it is. Uh, there are no exceptions to that. You need to have your five hundred one c three letter um, included with your application. That is that that is the only way to be fair to everybody. That is required. Uh, would you be able to provide reference, event, or case, uh, Jeremy? I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Would you be able to provide a uh, reference event or case? Jeremy, are you still with us? Maybe you could help me understand. I'd be happy to try and answer. How specific does a budget need to be? Extremely. If you want funding, if you are printing flyers, if you are printing banners, if you are securing a bus, and it's estimates. You don't know. We understand that you're not going to know for certain. You're estimating what it is. So we're not going to ding you because the you know the bus costs you 600 and you said it was going to be eight. We're not going to look at that. But you want to list as much of that because when the time comes to uh, when the committee is reviewing these applications, they do look at, and, and like I said, we may not fund your entire program, but if there are items in there that, that the committee just wants to support and there are items in there that they can, 
it's nice for you to give them options. So if you can make that budget as detailed for your specific program, I think it's more beneficial to your organization to do that. So yes, if you can make it very detailed, that would be great. Hello, um, can I clarify what my question? Yes, can you can you identify who's speaking? Because there's a lot of people on this on the little. Yeah, this this is Jeremy. Jeremy. I just yeah, yeah. Hi, Jeremy. Yes, of course. I, I was driving, so I couldn't text it correctly. But my question is, if you you guys have any like previous uh like event or or, or other project, um, if we can take a look at as a reference, that would be really helpful. So that that was my question. You know, as a matter of fact, Jeremy, if you keep an eye, which I invite everybody to do, keep an eye on the Port of Los Angeles website. So what our media group has been doing is that mm -hmm. they've been highlighting the various organizations that have received funding this fiscal year for the 23-24, and they've been um, highlighting some of those. So you can get a sense of the variety of programs that are happening. So I invite you to take a look at that, whether it's... Um, programs like the um, just the Avalon Arts and Cultural Alliance that does that does this event, the art walks on the Wilmington side, or we're talking about the Cabrillo, uh, Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. And they do, um, they have a couple of festivals that the port is able to be a partner with them, the Los Angeles Maritime Institute. So I encourage you to do a little bit of research, look at the Port of LA website, and, and then Follow us because we have been promoting the various partners. And again, that's what we're looking for. It's it's, it's partnerships with our local nonprofits. Um, and, and we want to highlight them, one, to help more people learn about you, but also to make your programs go, grow as well. So um, if you would um, do that, I think you'll get a, a little bit better insight of what uh, kind of programs have been funding funded up until, uh, up until now. Are there, okay, are there any much. other questions? I, I heard somebody. Yes, this is Richard Watson. Hi, I'm, Hi, with, the LA, I'm with the LA Community Garden Council. I see my executive director Omar is on as well. Uh, we submitted a grant uh, request last year and we didn't win. So my question is, what is the process for notifying the people who didn't win and, and getting feedback as to why? So I um, email everyone um, that uh, both wins and, th and that is awarded and those that don't. And so I, I will email you with the regret notification after um, we, we notify those that are being awarded. And I give my contact info. And for the most part, I've, I've had a few follow up um, and I'm happy to have a conversation with you. It, it, I don't recall and I wouldn't want to speak <laughs> at this workshop with everybody what that was, I can go back and look at uh, some of the notes from the review committee. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to have a have I'm happy to have a conversation with you about what uh, what might have happened. I, I do want to remind everybody that this last year was quite competitive. We had 65 um, grants that were that were reviewed, and so it was. It is not an easy it is it is not an easy task for the the committee to to um, to award the money, we do took it out a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, and discuss the merits. But uh, it is, it is, it, it is a competitive process. But I'm, I'm happy to, to have a conversation with you and um, about what might have happened last year, and to be specific. Thank you. We'll follow up with an email. Thank you. You're welcome. And then let's see. Can we use our budget from last year or does it need to be for this year? Um, so your your budget should match what you're applying for for this year. So if you anticipate that what you submitted last year is pretty much going to be uh, similar or the same, um, then, then that's fine. You would just update it to show 24, 25. Um, but as much as possible, what you are applying for should be what should be reflected in your budget. But again, that, that's a determination for you to make. And then can the same organization submit to request? Yep, we've already answered that. Yes, you can. You, you're able to do that. Would you want it with two separate? But yes. So if you are submitting pursuit two separate programs or events, 
then 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 yes, you need to um, your your application should the budget that um, comes in with that event or program should reflect that specific one uh, and not not something separate. So yes, you would need to be able you would need to show that. Let me know if you yeah. So I would say yes, you're submitting two separate applications for two different programs or events, and each one of those applications and programs would have their own budget. Yes. Are there specific COVID procedures and requirements apart from? No, not anymore. Not as not uh, as it was previously. Just you're aware that we should be um, we should be safe and and and. Uh, so yeah, not, nothing specific. Otherwise, I would have included in the application if you needed to include something specific. But not anymore. We we are fortunately it appears we're we're a little over that that hurdle now. Let's see. I think I've answered all the questions in the in the. Anything else, anyone? Um, we're about almost at the hour mark. Well, again, um, you you have my, uh, how do I go back to that? Um, wait, let me share that again. So you have there uh, the, you have there the, my email, my direct email. You have the email where you want to submit your, your application to. Um, again, don't wait till that, you know, 3.30 <laughs> on May the 6th, please. Um, if you can get it in, the sooner the better. Uh, let's see. You're very welcome, Jolene. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, unless there's anything else, I think I've covered. So if you if you check back with the Port of Los Angeles um, website, you'll you'll be able to to download the PowerPoint, and then um, I think what they're what we will, our media group will probably do is we did record the today's workshop they might have to clean it up a little bit i don't know and then we'll make sure and, sh and share that as well so that if you wanted to go back um uh to look at today's discussion you can do that but again you can reach out to me directly as well i'm i'm happy um to assist uh as much as i can where will the recording sites be located at so it's port of los angeles.org you will you will visit the port of Los Angeles. That's our so if you're not following us already, you should shame on you. Um, uh, port of Los Angeles org and and um, and our, our 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 media group does a really good job of keeping keeping it updated and current. We're always up um, providing additional information. So make sure that you that you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all of those. But port of Los Angeles org. Thank you, Laura. Um, and then can you explain what has been done before and the but wait, can you explain what has been done before and the budget on what? I'm sorry, Jane, I need clarification on that question. Can you can uh, on the budget or or yeah. recognition? Are you there? Yeah, it just mentioned about some sort of recognition of the port, like with banners or plaques or something like that. I said plagues. <laughs> it didn't come up yeah. right so, in the text. Yeah. So basically what, what the application is asking as is as part of this partnership, um, you know, are are you gonna add our logo to your website? Are you gonna hang a thank you banner on your building if we're if you're painting a mural with this money? Are you gonna, you know, are you, are, if you're gonna have a program book, will the, will your, will your sponsorship cover your, the port, including a, a ad in your program book, you know, so those, those are the kind of things, what you describe, you tell us what type of recognition will this partnership include in, uh, and so you want to, as much as possible, describe that thoroughly. So it's up to you. We leave that up to you. But those are some examples. It said a plaque. So that's what I was, you know. That, that, that could be, that plaque. is up to you to determine. That is up okay. to you to determine. So it could be banners. It could be, it includes an ad. We're going to add your logo to our website. We're going to thank you on social media. Um, we're going to, in some cases, yeah, it's been a plaque, depending on on what the, 
on, on, on what the program is or the event is. So it, it's completely up to you. We won't di dictate to you what we want, but we'd like to know from your end what you were planning to do. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so it's, it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'm going to stop sharing. And unless there's anything else, folks, thank you so much for taking the time. And then uh, email me and get your applications in. And we wish everybody the very best of luck. Thank you, everybody. Have a, have a good night. Take care. Thank you very much. Good night.